Hello, and welcome to this video where I'll demonstrate how to create and store project templates within PLS Grid to simplify and standardize the creation of new PLS CAD models. A project template is essentially a PLS CAD model which contains various reference files which are used in the PLS CAD model, such as a criteria file, feature code file, drafting settings, part file, available structure list, drafting attachments, and so forth. Now, templates are stored in PLS Grid, and multiple templates can be created for different types of projects, like distribution lines, transmission lines, maybe for different regions or states in your territory, or any other unique PLS CAD modeling scenarios that you may encounter. So now, I'll open up PLS Grid and demonstrate how to create a project template. Here, I've opened PLS CAD and I'm connected to one of our PLS Grid servers. So now I'll create a new project template using the Create Template command, and I'll enter the name of my new template here. Now to populate the template with various reference files, I can either import the files from an existing PLS CAD model with this option, or I can start with a blank model and add individual reference files one by one, which is the option I'll choose for this demonstration. Here, I'll enter some information to describe the new template that I'm creating. And when done, I'll go ahead and click the OK button, which will add the template back to the PLS Grid server. Now, I'm taken back to a blank PLS CAD model where I can manually add all the reference files that I would like to have in my template. First, I'll add a criteria file using the load CRI file command and then I'll browse my computer to find the appropriate file. Next, I'll add a feature code file using the load FEA file command to locate the feature code file that I would like to use. I can also add method one and method four structures to the template by adding them individually here in the available structure list table. Now, another option is to load an entire available structure list from another PLS CAD model using the load str file command. Adding structures to your template is a great way to have all of your standard structure models readily available when you use a template to build a new PLS CAD model. Now, similar to structures, you can add wire files to a template so users won't have to search for them when building new PLS CAD models. This can be done using the available cable list. Now in this example, you can see that some cable files have already been added, and that is because they were referenced somewhere in the criteria file that I loaded earlier. Now I can add additional cable files to this list, and I'll do that here using the PLS downloads button to search for and download some cable files from the PLS website. Drafting settings can be added using the load PPS command under the drafting menu. I can ignore this warning here which was generated because I did not have an alignment defined in this template file, and, but that's not significant for this situation. Now attachments can also be included in your template file by adding them in the Attachment Manager dialog. Or an alternative method is to import attachments from another PLS CAD model using the Merge Attachments from Another Project command. That is what I will use in this case. Now, this might be useful to have standard drawing borders, logos, and other items for your drawing sheets, along with the PPS drafting settings in your templates to streamline the creation of plan and profile drawings in your PLS CAD models. It's also possible to include non-PLS CAD documents or files in a template by attaching them via the Reference Manager dialog. So for example, this could be used to include various design standard documents 
or maybe quality assurance checklists which need to be used on every project. Now, once I've loaded all the reference files I want to have in my project template, I will save this model and then I'll check it back into the PLS Grid server so it will be available for others to use on their projects or possibly edit the template file in the future if changes, updates, or corrections need to be made. Now, as part of the check-in process, I can add comments to describe this revision of the template. And then below the comments is an automatically generated list of the changes that I've made to the template file in this session and these changes are saved with the template as part of the revision tracking process in PLS Grid. Now, when I open the PLS Grid Project Manager Discovery dialog, I'll check this Template Projects option box to limit the display to only the project templates, which makes it easy to locate template files among all the other project files on this PLS Grid server. Now you'll notice that my template currently is at revision 1, since revision 0 was the initial save of the template, and then after that I added the reference files and saved it again, which then became revision 1. So now that I've created a template file in PLS Grid, Let's see how we can use this project template to start a new PLS CAD model. Now, I've opened a new session of PLS CAD, and I'm connected to the same PLS Grid server as earlier in this video. So to start my new PLS CAD model, I'll use the File New From Template command. Then I'll enter the name of my new PLS CAD model here. And then below it here is a list of all the current project templates saved on this PLS Grid server. So I'll go ahead and select the new template that I created for my model. Now at the bottom of this dialog, we have some options on how we want to define the alignment of our project. The alignment, or PI locations, can be defined graphically using the PLS Grid Map View or by importing an alignment defined outside of PLS CAD using a KML or a KMZ file. And although it's not listed in this dialog, a third option would be to uncheck both the KML, KMZ, and grid view options. Now doing so will create a new PLS CAD model, but it will have no survey data or alignment, which you could then import your own survey data points from an ASCII text file, a CSV file, a LAS file, or any other source that's supported by PLS CAD, and then manually define your alignment. Now, if you do use the KMZ, KML, or grid view options, there are additional options below to define the amount of terrain data and imagery you want to import, and also an option to automatically create a TIN model once the survey data is imported. So you can pick and choose which options work best for your particular project. Now, in my case, I'm going to use the default settings, but I'm going to increase the terrain data and WMS imagery width to get a little bit more data for my example. Now, I'm asked to enter any comments about what will become revision zero of this new PLS CAD model. So I will enter those here. Now, after clicking the OK button, I'm prompted with the PLS grid view map since I chose to define my alignment using this grid view map in the previous dialog. Now, I'll zoom into the area that I want to use for this example project. Once done, I will simply click on the map where I would like my new PI points to be placed. And then, once I've entered the last PI for my alignment, I hit the Enter key to complete the alignment. Now, I'm presented with a list of survey data files that are available on this particular PLS Grid server for the area that's defined by my alignment. I could select any one of these files to import the data, or I could use the Download from Internet option below, which will import publicly available USGS survey data, which is hosted on our website and available to anyone using PLS CAD. 
So I will use this option for my example. So PLS CAD will now download the survey data and the WMS images. It will create the ground tin model and it will import the various reference files from the project template. Once this is complete, I, begin, I can begin spotting structures and stringing wires to complete my line model in PLS CAD. Because I started this PLS CAD model using a template file, we can see that the feature code data has been imported. along with all of my criteria information and the available structures and the available wire files and other reference files. And because the customized drafting settings and attachments were included, when I open a sheets view for my project, you can see I already have a good head start on the plan and profile drawing sheets. So I hope this video shows you how easy it is to create and store project templates in PLS Grid and how you can utilize them to quickly build a new PLS CAD model. Now, For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen. Thank you for watching this demonstration and for your interest in PLS software, the industry standard in overhead line design.